sound and talk about the sound that, that God is looking for. When God created the heavens and the earth, there was a sound. There was a sound. He made a sound because nothing changed and nothing moved and, and the earth was without void. There was a sound that came out of God. And, and until God said, he had to say something. And when God said, life started coming to stuff. But nothing changed until the sound came out of God. You have five senses. And listen to me closely because this is very important. What I'm about to tell you. Now, I want you all to really listen to this because this is profound. God does not show you anything with your eyes. God doesn't show you anything with your eyes because the Bible says eyes have not seen. Come on. He doesn't, he doesn't lead you forward with your smell. He doesn't lead you forward with your touch. He doesn't lead you forward with your taste. God said they have one sense that I'm going to use to communicate with you. He said they have one sense. The, the people have one sense I'm going to use to communicate with them. And that's your hearing. That's your ears. Come on, I didn't make this up. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing. and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. That's what the Bible says. And see, this is hard. This is hard. This is a hard thing. See, he wants to get into your hearing, your hearing. And this is, it, this is a hard thing because your eyes are your most dominant sense. Amen. For anybody who is not blind, amen? amen. Anybody believe that? Amen. Come on. And see, see and, and God moves by what we hear. Isaiah said, he said, I hear the abundance of rain, but there was no clouds, y'all. Come on. They said in, on the day, uh, in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, they said uh, they heard a sound of a rushing mighty wind and there was no fire in the house yet. Come on, y'all. There was no fire in the room yet. But they heard it. They heard it. They heard it. See, the opposite of faith is not doubt. It's sight. Think about it for a minute. Once you can see it, you don't need faith for it. Come on, y'all. Once you can see it, faith is irrelevant. You don't need faith. Come on, if the doctor told you you can't have children, you don't need faith to have babies once you got the baby. You need to believe it until you get it. Come on, y'all. Come on. See, see, what faith tells you will cause you to one day be able to see it. But he will never start there. That's the end of your miracle, not the beginning. See, your miracle starts with what God tells you and what goes into your ear. And it culminates with seeing with your eyes what you heard God say. Come on, y'all. Just give me a minute. I'm on a roll here. Am I on a roll? Everywhere in the Bible you see God, you see noise. Why is church so quiet, y'all? See, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand why church is the place you want to be all conservative. Because God moves with sound. <clears throat> why have we allowed the devil to make over make 90% of our churches so quiet you can hear a pin drop in it? Amen. Come on, the church mouse. Amen. Why, why have we allowed the devil to make it that way, y'all? Anywhere they, they were carrying the Ark of the Covenant. And I, was, I, I got a real revelation in this thing. Even though I've, I, I've studied praise and worship so much, I got a revelation on this thing when I was, uh, was studying this weekend. And anywhere they, they took the Ark of the Covenant, they were, they were going nuts. Horns were blasting, trumpets were blowing, harps were being played, Judah was going forth. Those were the praises, y'all. And see, they were, they were screaming, they were shouting. The, and the other Levites, the priests, were walking with them. And when the presence of God got off the shoulders of the priests, it was set in the temple. And, and then there was praise and worship surrounding the Ark of the Covenant 24 hours a day. Come on, night and day, first, second, third shift, worshiping all the time, day and night, every day of the year, every holiday, every feast, every festival, the presence of God was always accompanied with sound. Yes. Now, you might say that's the Old Testament. Well, let's go over to the New Testament. Now, where Paul and Silas begin to sing and praise God, yeah, and, and the gates were shaking and the prison doors flew open, who always got the miracle, the ones who were going nuts, the one who, who was being stupid. Jesus would, Jesus, listen, y'all, Jesus would walk, in a, walk into a town and wouldn't heal nobody. He would walk into a town and won't heal anybody. But then there'll be that one person, <laughs> son of David. Oh, <laughs> they would be calling out, Jesus, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And then everybody around them would be trying to get them to be quiet. And they'd be saying, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. And then what would happen then? Then that person would be, hey, hey, Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. 
free. And, uh, come on, y'all. They trying to make you be quiet, but you got to get Jesus' attention. And see, somebody had to be cutting up. God, Jesus would always bless the one who was cutting up. And listen, y'all, if, if ain't nobody cutting up, then Jesus will cut up. Come on, everybody's trying to be all good and all neat and proper. Jesus said, okay, I'm, I'm going to cut up a little bit. Here, Jesus will start cutting up. He won't, he won't be laying hands on people. Then he'll start spitting in their eyes. He said, come here, come here. Oh, you need to be healed? Come here. Come on, Jesus will start cutting up, y'all. Come on, I got to shake things up a little bit. And now, now church is the most boring place on the earth. Come on, where do we get that? Where do, how, how do we get there? I can't show you anywhere where God moved in silence. God has always made it where he, he, he moves in sound. And God has built you and wired you that sound moves you too. Come on, y'all. The movie industry has known this for ages. They've known this for years. Think about when you, uh, when you watch a movie, the sounds that go along with it, that make you scared and make you happy. And, and they're all, I'm telling you, I just had an experience of being in the color purple. Me and Anita were in the color purple, and we were watching. We had a viewing party Friday night. And, and uh, when we, I was listening to the music, I was like, man, the music sounds good, but it transitions your feelings. Yeah. The brightness, the darkness of the mood. Because listen, when Mr. was having his nervous breakdown, the sound was very dark. But when Celie and, and when Nettie was coming back from Africa and meet Celie, that was a beautiful moment. And the music was very different. So it transitioned the way you felt. That made you want to cry. Amen. Come on, y'all. They've known that for ages. Church seems like it's the most born in place. They want you to be quiet and, and everything. But God's wired you th- that way so you can embrace sound. Church just doesn't get it. I don't know why they don't get it because the songs that they sing are sad. Come on, come on. I'm, I'm a worm. I'm scum. I'm crap. I'm, I'm losing it. I'm dying. I'm, I'm, the devil's beating us up. Get me out of here. And I'm like, man, I want to cut my wrist too. I, I can't sing sad songs. I, I, I want to sing songs about the greatness of God and the victory that God has won. Come on, y'all. If you're looking for the sad song, church, you got the wrong address. Think about this for a minute. If you, if you go to a fast food restaurant and they want to get you out of there quick, they play music you can't stand long. <laughs> Come on, you don't even know it. But if, if you go down to Ruth Chris in the Hilton downtown, they're going to play music that you can stay in there and listen to for three hours so you can keep on ordering, so you can drop that $120, $150 on the meals. <laughs> Come on, y'all. It's all about the sound. It's all about the sound. If you're in a store and they want your kids to buy clothes, they're not going to play music for mama. <laughs> they're not going to play mama song. But if you're going to buy an evening gown, they're going to play some different kind of music for you. It's all about the sound. Because we've been made in his likeness. You know, come on, you move by sound, too. I had Jamon to stay up there because I want him to help me. There are times and there are places while I'm preaching where I'm trying to take you and, and it helps. Listen to this. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters. Come on, y'all. I got like two amens right there. T- Tarrant was amen to me. Come on, Jamon, give me some strings real quick. Play some strings. Come on, play, play, play. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. See, what what happened there? What happened? See, I told you about the still waters, but he took you there. There's a sound. Sound can change you, y'all. If I I were to show you Psalms 149 or Psalms 150, see, God God said, he said, praise me with the harp, praise me with the lyre, praise me with the string instruments, praise me with the drums, praise me with the cymbals, praise me in the dance, clap your hands, all ye people, shout unto me with the voice of triumph. 
Come on, come on. God got all, the, all that noise and chaos and instruments around him. Right now, if you think about it, right now around the, the throne room, right now,